The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Market Like a Pro, uh, how to grow your social, how do use social media to grow your mortgage business. My name is Jillian Putnam, and I'm excited to be hosting this session today. In this webinar, we'll be talking all about how mortgage brokers and loan officers who are new to the wholesale mortgage industry or looking to go independent can use social media to their advantage. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with BeAMortgageBroker.com, we help connect individuals with professionals who will assist you to become or join an independent mortgage broker. Now, I'm pleased to introduce our panel of mortgage experts. Matthew Welsh and Marlene Light, Directors of Wholesale Development at United Wholesale Mortgage, along with Danielle Kilberg, a professional social media strategist. Next, I have a few housekeeping items to cover. The recording will be on demand after the live session. We'll send you a link via email after the webinar if you want to listen to it again or share it with others. If you have questions for our experts, please feel free to send it through the chat feature or email us at info at beamortgagebroker.com. Now, I'm going to hand things off to Danielle to kick this webinar off. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Danielle Kilberg, as Jillian said, the social media strategist for UWM. Thanks so much for joining us today. So want to kick things off with why is social media in poker? So I am biased. I can probably go on and on in terms of why it's important. But first thing, kind of breaking it down to two reasons. The first reason why I think it's wildly important is for searchability. So a lot of you maybe are getting websites starting out. So when you have a website, yeah, Google search is amazingly important. But when you start developing social media platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn, those also will appear under Google searches, making you wildly visible on the web. Second is overall digital awareness and brand awareness and creation, right? You have these creative platforms where your potential clients can learn more about you, your services, check you out your website, fill out an application. So it's just another digital touch point where you can kind of showcase more about yourself. Um, so that is my take on it. I'm gonna actually kick it over to Marlene and Matthew to talk about why they feel it's so important and maybe what their clients have been doing um, with social media. Yeah, so I would say for sure social media, like you said, Danielle, helps them connect with their clients and increase awareness about their brand 100%. Mm -hmm. um, just want to remind everybody, this is definitely not a passing trend. Like, this is here to stay. Um, this is going to be the, you know, the way that everybody is going to be able to utilize this. It's, it enables businesses to get exposure and grab the attention of more people and that could, you know, turn in more clients. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's 2020. The majority of Americans are on on platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and it's a it's a phenomenal platform for you to, as uh, Danielle mentioned, you know, get brand awareness and grow your business. Awesome. All right. So, the question I get, and I think a lot of us always ask, are what social platforms should you be on? There's a ton out there. There's the big ones we're going to cover today, but want to kind of dive deeper into which ones we recommend specifically for our industry and why. So LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is a no-brainer, right? So with LinkedIn, you can have your personal page, your company page. And then two, with us specifically, I think LinkedIn is a great spot to connect, like it says here, for recruiting purposes, right? If you want anything from processor, LOs, even just an office assistant, LinkedIn recruiting capabilities are huge. And then two, it's for referral partners, connecting with agents, right? Since it is a more professional networking platform, I'll be completely transparent and say, do a ton of maybe first time home buyers are finding you on LinkedIn? Probably not, right? That's more of a Facebook, Instagram sort of atmosphere, but it's still very important to have this professional network with a business page and a personal page. And then Facebook. Um, Facebook is not only just so, I think, the largest social media platform, but it has that nice mixture of both. I tell a lot of brokers I've worked with that it's that good place to entertain and educate. So you can post funny gifts and quotes, but then also more about yourself. Um, and so before I get into Instagram and YouTube, I'm actually going to turn it over back to Matthew and Marlene to kind of talk about what their clients are doing on here and maybe how they've been successful 
with LinkedIn and Facebook. Absolutely, Danielle. I've, I agree with you 100%. When it comes to LinkedIn, LinkedIn is king when it comes to, uh, you know, professional network, propping out your, your uh, partners, your realtor partners, title partners, and uh, creating a following there. But also, as you mentioned, for recruiting purposes, you're able to market to your target audience, which of course is qualified candidates, and then bring them aboard if, if that's what you're looking to do. And on the, uh, the flip side of things, a, a little bit more client facing, Facebook is really uh, really where it's at. You know, it really provides you a platform to market your business and the value that you bring to your consumers, programs that you may be offering, and also it, it enables you to share success stories. You know, I have a, a realtor friend of mine who happens to post every, every closing and um, his uh, his borrowers or not his borrowers, but his clients will uh, also endorse him on Facebook, which is as as you know is the best form of marketing that there is. So it's a uh, it's an excellent platform. All eyes are on you, you know. So I, I would get on Facebook ASAP if you haven't. He gets at least three listings a month from his posts on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to follow up with that, I would say LinkedIn, LinkedIn, like everybody has said, is it's already more of a professional platform. Um, and, and it's easy to actually create a professional profile on Facebook as well. If you're um, already in there and not really in the professional side of things, you can always go in and make it more professional. I'm seeing, like Matt said, a lot of success stories. Um, it's great when you see them post um, photos of their clients at a closing or they have bragging posts from days of from submission to CPC, maybe, you know, what's hot and trending now or, or some different programs that people might not know about. They're, they'll post different current rates that are in the industry or products and services that they offer that uh, otherwise people might not have any idea about. Absolutely. Yeah. So LinkedIn and Facebook, you guys hit the nail on the head. So important there. Um, another platform that I get questions on a lot is Instagram, right? Should I be on Instagram, Danielle? Is it worth it if I already have a Facebook? And I would say personally, LinkedIn and Facebook will be your two top to get started with and get that trend going, right? Um, Instagram is something that is very just visual. There's videos and there's photos. And I think with that, you have to be a little more creative on what you're posting, right? You can either post the same content from Facebook to Instagram, which is the beauty of it, where, like Matthew said, it is 2020, technology is on our side, friends. So you have the opportunity to simultaneously post without being overwhelmed. And I think too, with a certain target market, right? Always know maybe who you wanna target at that time. So for example, Instagram, those first time home buyers, millennial home buyers, that is the platform to engage them on, right? Especially with, if you're partnering with an agent on a listing or whatnot. Oh can really be visual. And then two is YouTube. Um, YouTube, fun fact, is actually owned by Google. So when you have a Google My Business and website, as I talked about kind of that searchability in the beginning, having a YouTube profile does help you appear in searches. However, though, if you're going to have one and not post videos, don't have one, right? So with this, videos are now that trending sort of content that is very engaging, right? So whether it's videos on the mortgage process, right? Frequently asked questions. I'm sure a lot of you guys, like we do too, get a ton of questions from past clients, future clients about the process, what to expect, great stuff to make videos on. Um, even just about you guys, you know, starting out, maybe making a video about who you are, or where you're located, just something fun that people can get to know, you know, your face with a name and hear your voice, really humanizing your brand. So YouTube is a perfect platform for that. Another thing with YouTube as well is that once you have those videos on there, they're easily searchable, people can find them. You can send them in email campaigns. Um, you can send them on Facebook Messenger, on Instagram. So they're pretty versatile. So I will say too, with there's of course more than just these four, but with that, I would say stick to these top four, especially LinkedIn and Facebook to get started. And then you should be pretty set to go there. And then the bottom line. So I mentioned this before, you know, focus on your target audience and then what you can provide value. Don't spread yourself too thin. And I think what we mean by that is I think we get overwhelmed sometimes in terms of, all right, I'm going to start out. I'm going to make a LinkedIn, a Facebook, an Instagram, a TikTok, a Pinterest. 
If you are not dedicated your time to actually consistently post on them or reply to comments or ask for reviews on maybe Facebook, make sure you're sticking to ones that are doable for you. You do not have to be on every social media platform coming from the social media strategist, I promise. Um, stick to ones that make sense. Um, you never want to be on something and you're missing out on comments and messages and stuff like that. So kind of focus on that goal and stay consistent too, right? I always say rule of thumb is post two to three times a week. There's so many different features and even, you know, free versions of software that can help you autonomize the process of it. So with that, and Matthew Marling, is there anything you want to add on kind of focusing on your target audience, spreading yourself too thin, consistency before I move on? Before I move on? I think it's incredibly important that you stay consistent with the marketing. A lot of my partners, they have a, a routine schedule where, you know, on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays, they're posting, you know, certain kind of content where it's gearing more towards product types. And then of course, when they have a, a closing, you know, they'll post a, a picture with their borrowers and talk about how smooth the process was. And, and uh, I like to call it social media brags. You know, we got this first time home buyer in their home and, and uh, you know, 14 calendar days. And it, it's just, it, stay consistent with it and like you said danielle stick to what you know stick to what's working you don't have to be all over the place with it if youtube's not your uh not your thing then you know don't you, it, use your time prioritize your time where you're seeing success and return on investment with it so that's what i have to say in regards to that right and i would just make sure that you are like you said not to spread yourself too thin go in with a couple of them become familiar with a couple of them understand what it is that you're doing in there don't all of a sudden join and get accounts with like all six of these platforms and and you know try to maintain them and keep up with them start small start with a couple of them especially ones that you're familiar with but if they're ones that you're not familiar with just start out a little bit slower and then work your way into it until you get a more familiarity with it absolutely all right so kind of talked about all right what platforms we've seen success on with our clients what we know works with our industry so if you are just starting out on okay i want to start on facebook how do i make an engaging profile and i have kind of kind of walked through the big things you want to think about as you're building your social media profiles this is an example with facebook but you know it can translate to linkedin instagram as they all have the same branding elements so first it's a no-brainer a logo um, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever it is, you have to put a profile photo. My best advice is that if it's not just you, right, it's you and another LO, um, you have more than just one person, definitely use your logo. If it's just you, you're a one man or one woman shop. Um, absolutely. I don't know what's going on. There we go. Um, absolutely. Just maybe put a headshot of yourself. People know you, they've talked to you. That works great. And then always make sure your logo is properly um, utilized to the pixels of that. So you don't want something too big, too small, making sure it fits the proper space. And then next is your handle. So how are people gonna find you? Just like a website, you have to pick a domain name for each social media platform. It sounds so incredibly silly, but I've had people just say, I'm gonna use Mortgage Guy 56789. I'm like, how are they gonna find you if you use that? So Use your company name, a variation of your name. Um, if you're an LO and just want to have your own company page, that's fine. Make a variation of that as long as it's searchable because that's how people will go into Facebook, type in the search bar, and make sure you're nice and easily populated. And then tabs. So this is more geared towards Facebook, but tabs are just the tabs on the top that kind of walk through each little section of your profile. So when they are clicked, they go into about you. They display your reviews, um, photos, videos, everything that you have either commented on, uploaded. So they're very important to think about what kind of functions you want to have that in your profile. So I'll go into about, but one of them up here is reviews. I could probably talk all day about how important reviews are, but Facebook is also a great outlet to leave reviews, just like on Google, um, Zillow reviews. Facebook allows past clients and agents to recommend your business or not. So that way when, hey, a new client seeing your Facebook, they see reviews, they see all these awesome things about you. So never um, forget that 
to encourage past clients to come leave reviews on Facebook because they are wildly seen and super important. And then about. So one of the tabs up there is about and front and center on your page will be the about section. This is where I think setting up a profile takes two seconds. This is where you're going to have to kind of think a little bit and be creative and smart about what you want to put in here. So, of course, the no brainers are your number, your website, where you're located, your hours, all that easy stuff. But then Facebook gives you an opportunity to actually flush out an about section, a company description. So more than just, hey, I'm a mortgage broker in Michigan, think about what services you offer, what makes you guys unique. Um, something maybe a fun fact people may not know about you, how you got started. Facebook also lets you upload something called a story. Um, a story as in underneath the about section where it's a nice sort of one pager that you can upload and it can be flushed out way more. Um, when it comes to content or anything else in your page, I always say keep it short and sweet. People's attention spans, I think, get you know, shorter and shorter as we get busy and busier and the time goes on. So with that, that actually allows you to talk about how you were founded and a little more about yourself. So always humanize yourself here, but very important to have a lot of good information in here. And then too, you can also link your LinkedIn, your YouTube, any other social channels you're on. And then cover photo. So just like how, hey, profile photos are important, cover photos are also super important. It may seem, you know, Silly of me to say, all right, make sure it's super branded and cool, but it's true, right? Everyone's eyes go straight to that huge photo when they look at your profile. So have your logo on it, if it's a tagline, your website, and then think about the image. You know, it could be something relative to your community, um, you know, a team photo or something like that, just to make sure they know a little bit more about you with that portion. And then lastly is the call to action. So on Facebook and on Instagram specifically, you are allowed a call to action. You can actually pick a button is what Facebook calls them. And whether it is, you have the options of sign up, call now like it shows on the screen, apply to, you know, learn more. So think of one that will help borrowers get a hold of you quickly. Call now is great. A lot of people are using Facebook and Instagram on their phones. So, all right, call now, boom really really simple learn more is also a good one though right people want to do their digital dive and investigation or social stalking whatever you want to call it they want to learn more about you before they start giving you some more information about them so always make sure it's a nice easy transition and call to action for them to get a hold of you or learn more about you all right so next what us um we're going to talk about is content so I'm gonna kind of quickly go over awesome things you can post. I get that question a lot too, like, well, okay, I have this Facebook, what the heck do I post on it to make it cool and not boring? So I'm gonna quickly go through some bullet points, then turn it over um, to Matthew Marlene again to talk about what sort of content a little more is engaging. So first one, review incentives, like I talked about encouraging individuals to leave reviews on your Facebook, but then also maybe running a contest, you know, that is totally fine. You can just say, hey, I'm leaving. If you leave a review, you'll be entered to win a Home Depot gift card or something like that encourages reviews and also helps that traction to your Facebook and other pages. And then testimonials. We love these, you know, sharing your client success stories, you know, how maybe you help them get into their home of their dreams or they're going through a hard time or they were had a crazy moves, anything of the sorts, if they'd be comfortable sharing that, because then it really shows that nice you know, warm and fuzzy feeling on how you truly help somebody. Community involvement. What are you doing with your community? A lot of the time, it could be nothing about your business related, just that maybe you're help sponsoring something. You guys are doing a certain walk or fundraiser or, you know, helping during the holidays. So a lot of those are just great. If you're, you know, out and about or doing something in your homes to help something around your community, great thing to showcase too. And then this one is the, probably the easiest way to go just to get content out there and flowing is your company information. So, you know, hey, who's the owner? Employee spotlights, milestones, you know, maybe you hit a record month. It's your one year anniversary of being open. It's all these cool things. So you can make that 
kind of go in any direction you want, but that's very simple content, easy to generate, and also gives people that are looking at your profile a little more info about you. Home buyer education. A lot of the time, first time home buyers, they're not educated on maybe the process of working with a mortgage broker. They may know some certain terms or jargon. They don't really know next steps. Great thing to flush out and share articles with, or even just you guys discuss best practices, what to expect. Social is great for that too. Mortgage Q&As, again, very, very, very simple content to put out there because clients turn to you guys as the experts. You know, they don't know. So if you can ease their mind or even take in the back of your head, start them actually thinking, what questions have I gotten from past clients? Whether it's with first time home buyers, you know, vacation homes, condos, refis, whatever it is on any sort of weird situation, you can think about maybe what people asked you. Put that in the back of your head and answer them on social is great. Products and services, again, what you hang your hat up on. You know, hey, we've closed in X amount of days, 3% down, things that will appeal to people on your service. And then last, um, before I kick it over to Marlene and Matthew, is industry adjacent articles. So what I mean by that is, yes, you can share articles about the industry, the market that we're constantly looking and viewing. But industry adjacent is something a little more along the lines of how to engage those past clients. Maybe someone, you know, you just worked with a first time home buyer. Awesome. They're so excited. What's going to make them stick around and keep following you? Right. You never want someone, you can't help it sometimes, but you never want someone to look at your profile and be like, all right, I closed. We're good. Unfollow. Don't need to see their stuff. So what this means is as silly as it sounds, maybe just, all right, I found this cool article from HGTV about refinishing floors. I know my, you know, things like that could just be something in the market a little bit that's a little more entertaining and fun, but still relate to a wide variety of, you know, your audience. Um, Marlene and Matthew, is there anything you want to add to that? Things I've missed, things you've seen that have been, wow, that was so cool my client did or anything you want to touch on? Absolutely. So all of these points that you just made are fantastic and extremely important. But just to add on a couple of things here, um, what you're wanting to do is you're also going to want to post content that's going to be specific to what you do, you know, what your brand is, what you're wanting to build your brand to be, and what value you're providing to your clients as well. What I've seen, in addition to all these things that uh, that you've you've labeled here, uh, my clients will also go on there and they will put to get put to bed uh, common misconceptions that a lot of consumers, um, and it's kind of been a, the the way of the past. You know, uh, for instance, the other day I saw one of my guys here in Michigan posted a, a status saying, "Did you know? You know, like, did you know that you could get into a home with as little as three percent down? You know, uh, you don't no longer need twenty percent down to get into a loan, and there's things like that. Like you said, that kind of ties into um, education, you know, and the uh, the Q&A portion of, of mortgages, and then you start to interact with them in the comment section. So all this is great. And um, yeah, I think Mar Marlene has something that she wants to touch on as well. Yeah, so a couple of things that I wanted to add to this is that it's important too, you can you can use different visuals and graphics, different images. Um, they, they're engaging, they, they bring the person that's scrolling through, they, if it gives them something to kind of go back to and look at, for sure it's gonna catch their attention. Um, I know that um, Danielle had hit on um, doing like contests and things like that. Those for sure will drive in some viewers. They do some games, contests, any type of giveaways that you might be able to. And then I would I would also add to show show your personality you know let them know that there's actually a person uh, behind there that um, so that you can share with them maybe a little bit of personal information about yourself don't get too crazy but you know tell them about your favorite books or maybe some hobbies that you do so that they know that there's also a person that's actually behind there and it's not just a one stop shop so that is all that I have for you. I love that point, Marlene. Yeah, definitely showing your personality. And, you know, I think that's what's so good about platforms like Facebook and Instagram a little bit more is because you can add that fun, those fun aspects about yourself, right? It doesn't even go with your personality. It doesn't have to be all super buttoned up, you know, boom, boom, boom. It can be a little more fun and light. And that's what makes all these different social media platforms perfect for kind of a well-rounded um, channel creation. All right. So our last little point, closing things out, should mortgage brokers be on social media? Of course. Um, it'd be weird if I said no, but absolutely. I think 
with everything, you know, like, like Matthew said, it is 2020. It is very important to be on social media. Do you have to feel or pretend that I'm not a, I'm, I don't know how to create content. I don't have Photoshop. I don't have someone to running my channels. I can't do this. Absolutely not. Taking it baby steps at a time of just making your channels, start posting. You do not have to be an expert to be successful at social media. You don't. You just have to make sure you're creating content that keeps you human and showcases your services. Um, so then Marlene and Matthew, any other closing statements about social media or you know any other reasons or cool success stories you've heard? I mean, I would say if you are not on there, that you definitely should be on there. I think that, uh, um, you know, to hit again, it's it's 2020. If you're not going to do it now, then, you know, you're, you're wasting, missing out on uh, where everybody is at. So for sure, get on there. Yep, 100 percent in, in, in agreement. It's one of the one of the easiest ways that you can help build brand awareness and, um, you know, get back in front of potential borrowers and and also, uh, you know, your, your partners. And, and like I said, those third party endorsements, those things are, are gold. So uh, yeah, absolutely. One hundred percent. If you're not on there, you're missing the boat. Absolutely. So, yeah, thank you again, um, Jillian. I'm going to turn it back over to you if we have any questions uh sure thing so thank you to our panel for sharing your advice on really how to use social media to help our help our audience grow their mortgage business or their individual business as well so um i'm sure so many of our listeners will really be able to take these lessons into their own mortgage career i know i definitely grabbed some great pointers as well um, we don't really have any time for questions, but if anyone uh, does have questions who are listening right now, um, please visit beamortgagebroker.com for more resource, resources really to help you make the switch. Um, our team is here to help you uh, become or join a mortgage broker every step of the way. So again, thank you to our panel who joined us. Uh, remember, you will be receiving an email with the webinar on demand soon. And if you have any questions, please email info at beamortgagebroker.com. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.